We want you for the next DCTS mom. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in to this student member of the board Q&A session for the Baltimore County Public Schools. Today, you'll learn a bit more about what it's like to run and serve as the student member of the board for Baltimore County. My name is Samantha Warfell, and I am this year's Baltimore County Student Council's president. And it is my pleasure to introduce SMOB's past and present, Halima Adekoya, SMOB for the 2018-2019 school year. Omar Rashid, SMOB for the 2019-2020 school year. Josh Mahamza, SMOB for the 2020-2021 school year. And Christian Thomas, our current SMOB and SMOB for the 2021-2022 school year. Thanks. Uh, let's have everyone introduce themselves. Uh, Halima, if you want to go first. Hi everyone, I am Halima Adekoya. I was the student board member for the year 2018 to 2019. I am currently a senior at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, pursuing an elementary education certificate and a political science degree. Awesome. And then Omar, do you wanna go ahead? Hey guys, my name is Omar. I was a SMOB for 2019-2020. I am currently an undergrad student at the Georgia Washington University studying international business. Awesome. And next up, Josh. Hi, everyone. My name is Josh Smob 2020-2021. Uh, I'm currently a freshman at Yale University studying ethics, politics, and economics. Awesome. And hello, everyone. My name is Christian Thomas. I am the Smob for this school year. And I guess that's all. I'm a student at Eastern Technical High School. I'm a senior now. OK, so the first question I have for our SMOBs today is why did you decide to become the student member of the board? And we can start with Halima. Why, of course. So thinking back as to why I decided to become the student board member, the first word that comes to mind is representation. And there's so much power in representation. And I just remembered applying and receiving and ultimately becoming student board member, how important and how focused I was on at the time I called it being the voice for the voiceless but then I realized the, there was there were no voices it was just a matter of amplifying voices that were often suppressed amidst all the chaos amidst all the politics so when I think about it now the goal and the vision was always to amplify the voices of every student across Baltimore County thank you Halima Omar yeah, similarly to Halima, for me, it was the word advocacy um, coming from Ethiopia, a third world country, coming to Pikesville, you know, a really high tech, one of the best schools in Baltimore County. I was, you know, extremely impressed with everything. We had laptops, education seemed great, AP classes, this, that. Uh, but then I started to notice slowly that, you know, every AP class I was in, I was kind of like the only student of color. Um, every, you know, interaction I had with like, bigger groups like after school clubs and all this all that i just didn't see diversity and inclusion um and that's kind of when i started to to, to kind of see the inequity that was in our public school system and how a lot of students didn't even know ap class existed they didn't know gt class existed they didn't know they could join these clubs uh, so that's when i kind of started advocating for you know students within pikesville and then sooner or later that led to me being offered a position to run for a student member of the board and then obviously we took it to the next level on the board level. Thank you. Josh? Yes, yeah, similar to uh, the previous speakers, um, there were a number of issues that concern um, education, e equity, um, um, and just the disparities that I saw in uh, communities around BCPS, but especially in mine. Uh, and I'd served in a number of uh, uh, leadership roles uh, in my school, but also in the community. And I knew that uh, uh, I had a particular interest in, to, in addressing these issues. And I didn't know much about the role of the student board member until uh, it was community leaders uh, that uh, told me about it and uh, uh, its potential to affect meaningful changes and encouraged me to run. And just when I was writing uh, the application and eventually uh, beginning my term, I saw it as a great opportunity um, to one, uh, 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 provide leadership 
uh, but most importantly, service, which I, I value highly. Thank you, Josh. And the reason that I ran for student member of the board was because I saw a stark opportunity gap in BCPS between the schools that we have. I ran a school like Eastern Tech, where there are so many resources and so many opportunities compared to a school that didn't have resources. They didn't have as evolved extracurricular activities. There weren't opportunities for students to exceed in their own school environment. And um, that's kind of the reason that I ran for the board. I wanted to create an inclusive and, and a space in our entire school system where every student had an opportunity. Um, and I think living through COVID-19 and, and running my campaign during the pandemic really showed me what those disparities look like and made me want to uh, step up and, and work to solve them. Next question is, what's one word that you would use to describe your time on the Board of Education for BCPS? And this time we'll start with Omar. One word to describe my time on the board. Um, that's a tough one, but I would say exciting um it was a lot happening uh, it was exciting to one learn the process of just being a student board member what the role entailed what i had to do it was exciting to to meet students all the time advocate on their behalf um, it was exciting to be able to make all these changes on behalf of over what 115,000 students um so it was exciting and a lot more words to come with it but if i had to pick one word i think it would be exciting josh Yes, for me at the time, um, just thinking of it in hindsight now, I, I think patience uh, was most important. Um, last year especially, uh, it was not a traditional year uh, as my predecessors uh, encountered and Christian, uh, some of uh, the remnants of like, the issues last year remain. Um, so there was a lot happening on the board um, and at times it might have felt frustrating and I felt like uh, the issues that you came on and you wanted to address were not uh, being addressed. Uh, so in that sense, you were frustrated. But I think if uh, for me personally, patience is important. Um, grounding yourself and thinking about thinking back to what why you ran and why it's important and just the students. Um, um, I think in that sense, you're going to be successful and you would stay with the job. Awesome. For me, I would say evolving is the word that kind of describes this year and my short five months on the board so far. I think that we've already done so much to combat uh, the disparities in education and, and kind of the learning loss that we've had last year in BCPS. And every board meeting is some new and innovative thing that BCPS is doing to make our school system a better place. Um, I really think that we are evolving this year to be more inclusive. We are taking more strides to create a, a better space. And I think I'm, and I, I'm honored to be a part of that and, and to be able to make my, small, my own contributions um, to the board for that evolution. OK, and next, Halima. Yeah, so my word is transformative, if anything. That that year, just being a student board, board member was transformative. For one, every moment up until then, even while applying for colleges in my senior year as student board member, I was telling myself I was going to become a child psychiatrist. Then I became SMOB and everything changed. I am now on a path to becoming an educator and one day being a superintendent, right? So if I can say a word for my year as student board member, it's transformative and not just in a sense of career path and personally for me, but just professionally. You learn every day. There is not a day that goes by being a student, student board member that you're not always learning, being called to expand, being called to divergently think about how can I impact this? How can I impact that? And then you get the impact of, then you get the impact, yes, of being in schools. And you're always thinking, how can I make this situation better for someone else? And if anything, I'll say being student board member really called me out of my skin and my my what I would say my socializations and things I always thought were true and called me to debunk that so that I can be the best advocate to Omar's word advocate for uh, someone else who may have the same background as me or may have an entirely different story. Our next question is what are you most proud of from your time on the Board of Education and this one will start off with Josh. Yes, um, going into uh, my term, I think one of my big focus was trying to um, uh, amplify the voice of the student board member and um, just increase its importance on the board. Uh, um, 
So I was kind of following Omar and uh, what well, he, I think I, I have to credit him for leading the charge on student board number of voting rights uh, and increasing those. Um, and just um, my work and my uh, interactions with other board members, I, I try to find a way um, to increase the presence of the student board member, but also um, continue on the advocacy that Omar started uh, and Christian's continuing also. Um, and although we haven't achieved that yet, I think um, it's one of the, starting that, uh, continuing that conversation was important. And uh, just in terms of the board and my relationships with the board members, I was able to uh, get garner their trust um, and eventually being uh, uh, nominated to board leadership the first time for a student board member at Baltimore County. I think that was critically important. And I know Christian's doing much more important things and just increasing the voice of student members. So I'm just looking out to see uh, what more we can get. Thank you, Josh. Josh, uh, for my answer to this question, I would say that I'm most proud of my connection to students. I think that one thing that I've really tried to do this entire time on the Board of Education is ground all of my work in the students and in amplifying student voices. And so when I was advocating for a more inclusive calendar, um, I got students to come to the board and testify on behalf of that calendar. I was amplifying student uh, news articles from the Delaney Griffin to uh, other organizations in VCPS. And I was working with students, visiting schools. I think I visited 26 schools in the month of October and November. And that grounding that work in students, uh, empowering myself with the voice of students is I think uh, what I'm most proud of. And something that I think will, has elevated me to do so much more on the board than I even thought I could do. And is continuing to elevate me to push and to, and to bring the conversations that need to be had to the board. Um, even if sometimes it can, make some other board members t turn their uh, scrunch up their face in a, in a negative way because of what I'm saying, or even make some school officials. Um, I, I think that I, I'm really proud of that connection to students and and constantly trying to figure out what's that next way I can reach out to students to hear their concerns. OK, and next we have Halima. That's amazing, Christian, that's amazing. One thing I'm definitely most proud of is my impact on the mental health ideas and concepts that stemmed from my year on the board. Be little did I know that it would be telling of what I would want to focus on as a policy change agent. A lot of what I'm centered on is uh, social emotional health and having been able to impact our work and strive around mental health and having the mind over matter campaign. That is definitely something that I will always hold to my heart because my no matter even on the most toughest situations, even those long nights at the board, right? My no matter. So I would definitely say that is one of my most proud accomplishments having been on the board. Thank you, Halima. And next we have Omar. Yeah, for me, uh, I would say we did, I mean, we did a lot of great work on the board. We had a Black Lives Matter resolution passed. We started the work on full full small voting rights. Uh, we integrated, you know, one love, healthy relationship of mental health, similar to Halima within Baltimore County Public Schools. So we had some really great work done on the board. But similarly to what Christian said, for me, I think it was more of the personal connections I've got to make with students uh, doing school visits, whether it was through social media. I tried to, you know, we tried to do as many in-person visits as possible, but I did get to reach a much broader range of students via social media. So just kind of showing people and kids that, you know, want to learn to speak up from themselves, to learn that there are positions out there that they can run for, that there's no limitations to what they can do and they can't do. Um, and just being able to just be here and be there for the students while I was SMOB. And to this day, I still get, you know, texts and DMs for students, you know, asking for advice, whether it was, you know, what classes do you recommend or how do I run for this or what do you think about this? Just being able to connect to make those connections with those kids and let them know, you know, they can do whatever they want, whoever they are. Baltimore County Public School supports it and being able to emphasize that really was probably the highlight of my term. So my final question is, do you have any advice for student member of the board hopefuls? And I'll start us off this time. And I would say my only piece of advice is to stay true to yourself and to stay true to your core beliefs and to who you are. I think that there are so many outside opinions, so many uh, crazy things that are going on in the Board of Education, and there's 
always going to be a, another voice that's trying to sway you to do one thing or, or to encourage you to do another thing. And I think that if you remember why you ran for the Board of Education, and I don't remember which mob said this, but they said to remember those policy and, and, and those ideas that you ran on, uh, use them on your time on the board and, and don't become too involved in some of the board drama or in some of the external um, issues that, that are going on. And remember why you're on the Board of Education. Okay, next up, Halima. Christian has already given so many phenomenal advice and I just add, hold on to your why. In everything, in anything, always remember to hold on to your why. And when it gets hard, sometimes it's easy to forget your why, but it is your why that is going to keep you showing up every day and wanting to do the work. Sometimes it's not going to be somebody shouting you out on Twitter, somebody shouting you out on Instagram, a news article. It's not going to be that. It's going to be literally you, you reminding yourself, why did you want to be smob in the first place? What impact did you want to have? What change did you want to create? And then letting that lead you from July 1st all the way to June 30th the next year. Second of all, laugh have fun if there's anything I look back and I'm like I didn't savor this moment enough or I didn't hold on to this moment enough is the moments of bliss and happiness where it's like I love being swab this is amazing I am hanging out with this person I'm getting to know these students I miss all the kids now I'm I'm in higher ed and I'm like there's not much there there's not much interaction with students and I just wish I could have held on to those moments so much more and so much longer, but I would definitely say remember your why and remember to either capture the moment, have as much fun as possible because it's not supposed to be daunting. Thank you, Halima. I'm going to have to take some of that advice for these next few months. Um, Omar? Yeah, similar to both of you, those are great you know, points. Um, I would say kind of same thing. It's remember who you're there for, who are you representing, every decision you make, you know, every vote you make, who are you making it for, who are you representing, and just keeping that in mind, keeping, you know, the 115 plus thousand students in mind. And then again, similar to what Halima said, you know, it's it's a process, it's a journey, enjoy it, don't get too stressed out about it. Um, and then again, similar to what Christian said, you're going to be the biggest adult in that room. I will tell you right now, from my experience, there may be people twice your age, but you will be the biggest adult in the room. And sometimes I can get a lot and it can get stressful and you will get a lot of backlash for it. But again, keep your head strong. You're there to represent your students and just do it. Just kill it. Have fun. Enjoy. Don't stress and just have a good time. Thank you, Omar. And last but not least, we have Josh. Yes. Um I'm not going to lie to you. I think there's going to be times where you feel like what you're doing is a full-time job. And uh, it, it is obviously a full-time job because you're not only answering emails, not only attending meetings, but also you are uh, doing one thing that other board members are not doing is interacting with students and answering their concerns. Um, so I think my biggest advice is balancing uh, all aspects of your life, uh, uh, whether it's academics, that's really important. Uh, most spots have been seniors and in senior years when you're applying for college, um, finishing up with your exams, uh, maybe even taking the SATs. So I think balancing your academics, then also SMOP, extracurricular is really important. Uh, what are you doing in your personal lives? I, I think sometimes we might get lost in doing all this board stuff and we forget to uh, hang out with our families and doing things that we like to do. So I think uh, balancing all three uh, is really important um, and just really on the board in terms of keeping your eye on the bigger picture. I know uh, Halima mentioned the why. I think don't just get sucked into the different circles or listen to the, uh, different voices. Really seek out the uh, subject matter experts um, and uh, go to the meetings that you think are really going to be important uh, for what you're doing. Um, and also, um, what are the cost benefits uh, of uh, what you're doing? Uh, maybe sometimes you might, uh, like whether it's a meeting or uh, just a subject area that uh, is not as beneficial to what you're doing. I think focusing more on a, uh, uh, on a matter is gonna be beneficial to you and just narrowing things that you're gonna do is gonna be important. Uh, so that's my couple pieces of advice. 
Thank you so much, Josh. And thank you to Omar and Halima as well for taking the time from your busy, busy uh, schedule right now uh, to, to meet with me and to talk to the students about what uh, what they should look forward to if they become the student member of the board. Um, it's been an honor getting to talk to you all again uh, as the predecessors that have kind of led me to being able to sit in the seat right now. And uh, on behalf of all the students that I represent, uh, thank you so much for, for coming back and speaking with, with, with us today. Of course, we didn't want to do anything else at this time. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you for <laughs>